AT1963 with another uh, tip. It's trail camera season for most people. Is, you know, June, July, August is when they start putting them out. I run mine 12 months out of the year. I'm constantly out there monitoring what those, what bucks are doing throughout the year. Uh, some people don't like to do that. I, I, I enjoy running trail cameras almost as much as any. Right now I've got about 60 out on probably 15 wildlife management areas in three states. Uh, but one of the things you'll notice, in, in, especially down here in the south in Texas and Oklahoma, is our sun's relentless. And if you leave a camera out year round, eventually it's gonna fade. And here I have three of the original Moultrie 990i cameras. I bought these the first year they came out eight years ago, nine years ago, I don't even know when. These cameras are still running. This is the best camera. They take as good a pictures as any camera I've used to date. Uh, the sensors, and you know, it had a heat in motion sensor, superb. Still picks up after 25 yards. Uh, so these cameras, man, I, I wish that when they come out with a model like this, they would quit going to other manufacturers and remaking them. But one of the things about the Moultries is they really faded bad. And then same with the browning. If you leave browning out in the sun in Texas and Oklahoma for any length of time, you're going to get some fade. So what I've been doing, you can't be afraid to, to alter your gear. These are well past any warranty. So I've been taking just the spray paint like we do with the sponge to paint our sticks and, and our saddle gear and, and stands and stuff. And I've been painting cameras. That's what I've been doing. Uh, now, these still have a little bit of a smell left on them. I don't plan on deploying these until October, November when I'm hunting. So I'm painting them now and I'm, put, I'm putting on there the camouflage that I like. Uh, there's no camera right now being made that I feel like has good camo that blends in good. Uh, with a sponge in four colors in an afternoon. This took me about 30 minutes to paint these four cameras. The hardest part was taping out uh, this. And really with the sponge, if you're careful, you don't even have to do this. Not, most of the time I don't do it. I, I don't even fill those little holes up with uh, painter's tape. I, I just sponge it on and I don't put a lot of pressure so it don't go down on the glass. But uh, as you can see, the results are there. You put these in some of those swampy areas I'm hunting in some old decayed logs or up on trees or however you want to hide them and these things blend in. And you know, that brings me to another point. Hang on just a second. Let me pause this for just a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had to run out and grab one. I also get these cam lock boxes now and I mark the model because I run so many cameras of what they are. And I keep a log so that I know, hey, I've got a camera out in this wildlife management area. I want to go put a security box on it. I know what model camera that is out there and I know what box to take. But anyway, I've been doing the same thing, painting that. And you get these inside of a cam lock box. And I'm telling you, you can, one of the things that I do is I take bailing wire with me and I'll take a vine there's like poison ivy or if there's grape, I'll wear some gloves and I'll just twist it over here and I'll take some wire and I'll twist that vine over these to help break up the side silhouette. But you put these on trees, put a padlock on it or put your python cable through it. And my losses went down dramatically. I put these up about eight to nine foot high. Some I put four or five foot high, but with those, I screw them to the tree and then I put a python lock and another lock. So it's got three attachments to that tree and I've yet to have one stolen in the cam lock box. Now I had someone really try their best to rip it off the tree, but they weren't able to get it. So it's quite an, an investment. You're talking about 30 bucks a pop for this. You're talking about another 20 uh, for the python and then your padlocks and stuff. So, you know, you're, you're talking about easy 60 additional dollars. But, you know, with these cameras lasting so long nowadays, my brownings have been phenomenal. They've been lasting, uh, unless they get flooded or ants or something get in them, I haven't had a browning go bad on me yet that I've had to ditch. 
Uh, but this is worth the investment to me because not only stealing the camera, which last year I had four cameras stolen that weren't in cam lock boxes, even 12 foot up, one was 12 foot high and someone climbed up that tree, either carried a stick in or whatever, broke the camera off of the Python lock and took my camera. So losing the camera, of course, that sucks. But to me, what, what bothers me more than anything is I put a ton of time in running these cameras and putting them out and putting them in good locations. And that intel is invaluable to me. And for someone to steal that, that that's what irks me more than anything is they're, they're getting the rewards for all my labor. And uh, thankfully, I haven't ran into one of them yet because I, I don't know how, how I would handle that. But... Uh, I've got these on about 90%. Like I said, I'm running close to 60 cameras right now, and I've probably got another 15 in storage. Uh, a lot of cameras, I, I get it. But, you know, some of these I'm leaving out for 9, 10, 11 months before I go back and pull them. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering data off of a new area that I want to hunt, and I'll probably drop in five, six, seven cameras in, in that wildlife management area or in that specific area targeting creek crossings, trails, scrapes, whatever. And I'll leave it out there for the entire, uh, probably set them out in September like these cameras here. And I won't go back and get them till maybe July or August the following year. One camera, a Browning, believe it or not, I had out for two years. I totally forgot about this camera. And it was in a swamp and it, that swamp flooded for about eight months out of the year. So it didn't take a lot of pictures. And believe it or not, that Browning, when, and it was a special ops, I believe, when I walked up to that camera after it had been out in the woods for almost two years, it still took my picture. So these cameras are, and that was with lithium batteries. These cameras are phenomenal nowadays, and, and they're worth protecting your investment. And as pressured as public land is getting with all the YouTubes and all the public land emphasis now, you know, you got to secure your investment. You, you don't want all your hard work and effort, all your scouting, all your trail camera work going to, into the hands of other people. There are people that carry card readers with them and they download, they'll pull your card and they'll download it to their phone and put your card back in and leave you clueless if they've ever stole all of your data. Next thing you know, you got people camping out where, you, where your stands and stuff are. So anyway, just a quick tip, when the, when the sun fades your cameras, or if you don't like the, the camo on, on these modern cameras, uh, paint them up, man. Make them match the environment that you hunt in. Dave T1963, out.